What haunted me after any possible patching and mending was done was the damage to the intangible mind. What could be done for the tangle of memory, thoughts, and dreams? What is the cure for fear, for despair, for anger? What is the cure for a broken heart that is really a broken mind? That challenge has become my life's work. The novel is inspired by the renowned Frieda Fromm Reichmann, a psychiatrist who fled Nazi Germany in 1935, and by a series of connections and coincidences, took a summer job here in Rockville at the Chestnut Lodge Sanatorium. It was going to be just a summer job. She stayed here, she worked here, she established the lodge's reputation for treatment until her death in 1957 on the grounds. It's also the story of a current day psychotherapist, Eliza, and Eliza's 16-year-old son. And they are tenants in what was once Frida's cottage. Eliza and Nick are both in the midst of some difficulties in their lives. And Frida's, Frida's surprising presence in their lives becomes part of the story. I'm attracted to often a particular person, historical person, or an event, or a place, or in the case of Frida's song, this novel, I'm attracted by person, place, and events. But what I love about historical fiction is the opportunity to mingle what is known with what is not known. And in the case of Frida from Reichmann, much is known both about her professional and her personal world, but there were interesting gaps and spaces that for me as a writer were an, an invitation to go in and see what could I more fully imagine about what she was perhaps like. I imagine her as a very dynamic, very forceful presence you know, for me, I have always loved old buildings, particularly old houses and homes. And for, for both me as a person and for me as a fiction writer, I find them very, very intriguing. They're the containers of the lives that have been lived within them. With Frida's Cottage, I was incredibly fortunate both to live near it and to be in the neighborhood when Peerless Rockville bought the cottage and began the process of restoring it, which for me, I think, was something that planted the seed. Then in the course of writing the book, as I began reading more about Frida, reading the wonderful biography by Gail Hornstein, reading the history that Peerless Rockville's Eileen McGuckian and other people have put together, I realized that the cottage was, in a way, Frida herself because Frida had designed the cottage with the help of the best architect in Rockville, with the help of the best woodworker in Rockville. The house that she would never own because at that time, Jews could not own property in Rockville. It combines both Frida's resilience and her putting down roots here. And it also is very emblematic of of again, the barriers that existed for her here as well. The lodge closed in the late 1990s, and so the hospital itself stood empty for years. But sadly, the empty lodge burned on a June night in 2009. I was intrigued by what had happened and saddened by what had happened and began writing a story literally sparked by the fire that destroyed the lodge, trying to imagine what might have happened. This book would not exist without Peerless Rockville. Peerless Rockville saved the cottage, and without the cottage, I, I never would have written this novel. And the cottage has been designated now through the efforts of Peerless Rockville and others as a National Historic Landmark, which is a huge validation for Frida as a woman of science, for Frida as a refugee. 
music was important to Frida. She was an amateur chamber musician. She particularly loved Mendelssohn's songs without words. And she played them, and she played one song in particular so often that Dr. Dexter Bullard called it Frida's Song, which became the title of my book. Every reader will have his or her own experience with the book. And there's not a, a, a right message or a wrong message or a right impression or a wrong impression to take away from the book. One of my favorite sayings is, the book reads the reader, and I really believe that's true. But I hope readers will come away with a sense of the tremendous faith Dr. Frum Reichman had in the potential for individuals to heal. I hope readers will come away from the book with an experience also of the way having someone instill a message of hope in you, as Frida does for the character Eliza, having someone instill a message of hope can be so important in terms of going forward.